This is 15.4 part A, multiplying radicals. When we multiply radicals, we don't have to have like terms like we do when we're adding or subtracting radicals. Any number outside of the radical can be multiplied by another number outside of the radical, and any number under a radical can be multiplied by any other number under a radical. In these first few examples, we'll be multiplying monomials. And in number one, we have the square root of eight times the square root of two. Since both of those numbers are under the radical symbol, we can multiply them together. So we would get the square root of 16. Well, anytime we have an answer, we need to make sure that our answer is simplified. The square root of 16 is four. So that would be our answer. For number two, we have negative three square root of 10 squared. Well, this just means that we're multiplying negative three square root of 10 times itself. And like I said, any number outside of the radical gets multiplied by any other number outside of the radical. So we would multiply negative three times negative three, and that would give us a positive nine. And then square root of 10 times the square root of 10 would be the square root of 100. Again, we need to make sure that our answer is simplified. Well, the square root of 100 is 10. And remember, once we bring a number out of the radical, we multiply it times whatever is already on the outside. So we would multiply 9 times 10 and get 90. For number 3, we're multiplying the numbers outside of the radical. Negative 3 times negative, we know that's an understood 1. So negative 3 times negative 1 would be a positive 3. And then under the radical, we have, square, we have the square root of 6ab cubed c. And under the other radical, we have 3ab. Well, we multiply the 6 and the 3 that are both under the radical and get 18. A times A would be A squared. B cubed times B would be B to the fourth. And then we just bring down the C. Now again, we need to make sure that we simplify our radical. 18 is not a perfect square, but it does have a perfect square factor. The biggest perfect square factor of 18 is 9. 9 times 2 is the same as 18. Then we bring out the perfect squares. We already have a three that's on the outside of the radical. The square root of nine is three, and the two stays under. The square root of a squared, remember when we have a variable that's under a radical, so I'm gonna bring you up here for just a second to remind you how to do this. We take whatever the exponent is, so in this case for our a, our exponent is 2, and we divide it by whatever the index of the radical is. Since this is a square root, my index is 2, so we're going to divide the exponent 2 by the index, which is 2. 2 will go into 2 one whole time with none left over, so that means one whole a comes on the outside of the radical and no a's stay under. Then for my b, I have b to the fourth power. So in the same way, we're going to take our exponent and divide it by the index, which is 2 since it's a square root. 2 will go into 4 two whole times with none left over. So two whole b's come on the outside of the radical and none stay under. And then c, there's just one c. So if I were to do the same thing with the C, I have one C. If it's divided by two, two won't go into one any times. So there's still one C left under the radical. So one C stays under the radical because there's no um, pairs to come out. And then we multiply the three that we brought out of the radical times the three that was already outside of the radical. So we get nine A B squared square root of 2c for our answer. Now let's multiply 
a monomial times a polynomial. Just like in regular polynomials, if we have a monomial times a polynomial, we use the distributive property. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to distribute the square root of 10 to every term inside of the parentheses. So since 10 and the 2 are under the radicals, we're going to multiply those numbers. Square root of 10 times the square root of 2 would be the square root of 20. And then when I distribute the 10, the square root of 10 times the square root of 5, I get plus the square root of 50. Well, now we're back to adding. And we can only add if we have like terms. Well, these are not like terms, but let's see if we can get them to be like terms. Let's simplify. Well, the biggest perfect square in 20 is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. And the biggest perfect square in 50 is 25. 25 times 2 is 50. Well, the 4 comes out as a 2, and the 5 stays under. And the 5 comes out, I mean, 25 comes out as a 5, and the 2 stays under. So we have 2 square root of 5 plus 5 square root of 2. Those are not like terms, and we can't combine them, so this is our answer. For number 5, when I distribute and I multiply the square root of 7y times y, I get the square root of 7y squared. Then when I distribute the square root of 7y times negative 2 square root of 7, I get negative 2 square root of 49y. Okay, let's simplify our radicals. For the square root of 7y squared, 7 is not a perfect square, and it's a prime number, so it doesn't have any perfect square factors. So it's just going to have to stay under the radical. But y squared is a perfect square. The square root of y squared is y. So the y squared comes out as a y. When I take the square root of y squared, I get y. And the 7 stays under the radical. And then we have 49, which is a perfect square. The square root of 49 is 7, so we take that out. And then y is not a perfect square, so it stays under the radical. So this gives me y, square root of 7, minus 14, because I multiplied the negative 2 and the 7, square root of y. Again, these are not like terms, so we can't combine them. So that's our answer. All right, now we're going to multiply binomials times binomials. Well, just like when we're dealing with regular polynomials, if we have a binomial times a binomial, we're going to FOIL. So let's multiply our first two terms. 7 times 2, that gives me 14. Then our outer two terms. Since I have a 7 times a negative square root of 5, I can't multiply the 7 and the 5 because the 7 is not under the radical and the 5 is. So this would just give me a negative 7 square root 5. Then our inner two terms, same thing. I would get plus 2 square root of 5. I can't multiply those because they're not in the same place. And then the last two terms, a positive times a negative would give me a negative. Square root of 5 times square root of 5 is square root of 25. Now I want to combine like terms and simplify. Well, these two terms in the middle are like terms, so I can combine those since I'm at, now I'm adding or subtracting. So I'll bring down the 14 and then the negative 7 square root of 5 plus 2 square root of 5 would give me a negative 5 square root of 5. Remember, I just add or subtract the coefficients, and whatever's under the radical just stays the same. And then square root of 25, that's a perfect square, so the square root of 25 is 5, so I would have minus 5. Well, again, I have some like terms that I can combine, the 14 and the negative 5. I'm going to put those together, and I get 9 minus 5 square root 5. And again, if you wrote that in the other order, if you put negative 5 square root of 5 plus 9, that would be okay too. 
our last example, when we're multiplying a binomial times a binomial, these are actually conjugates of each other, which means it's the same term with a different sign in the middle. Well, when I multiply these terms together, again, I'm going to FOIL, so I'll multiply the first two terms. 3 times 3 is 9. The outer two terms, so that would be a negative 3 square root 5. And the inner two terms would be plus 3 square root 5. And then a positive square root of 5 times a negative square root of 5 would be a negative square root of 25. Well, when I combine my like terms, a negative 3 square root of 5 plus 3 square root of 5 would just cancel out. So I would have 9 minus the square root of 25, which is 5, and 9 minus 5 is 4.